It is Sunday, March 31st, early here in the morning. So today, we are continuing with our Why I Want series, the project where we go out there and look at prospects in the 2024 NHL Entry Draft. We discuss what they are, what they could be, where they could be selected in this year's crop of guys, and whether or not your favorite team should be interested in them. Today's Why I Want video is going over somebody that I think mostly Montreal Canadiens fans are going to flock to this video for, not even because he's like a legacy draft pick, this isn't the son of Saku Koivu or Lane Hudson's brother like some of the other prospects we've looked at, no 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 no, this right here is just straight up a guy that mostly Montreal Canadiens fans won't shut up about and it bodes repeating because this is a very, very good player. Today on the chopping block, we are going over to the WHL and the Spokane Chiefs, where a potential top pick lies in the wake. Today we are talking about forward Berkeley Catton. Now, if you've been on anywhere, Canadians, Twitter, Canadians, Reddit, whatever, you'll see a ton of Habs fans talking about Catton every opportunity they get. And then there are the other fans of Western Canadian teams like the Calgary Flames fan base. They want this guy too. I've been seeing a few other fan bases tossing themselves into the mix here. And for good reason. Berkeley Catton is an 18-year-old forward, 5'11", 163, left-handed guy from Saskatoon. He's from Sasky, baby. And because he is only 5'11", 163, you can kind of already infer what makes this player so special. It's not his size, not his physicality. Despite the fact that he may not have the biggest profile, though, Berkeley Catton has a consolidated ranking of 6th overall, compiling all the outlets available on Elite Prospects. Now, the rankings here vary quite tremendously depending on who you ask. Tony Ferrari has him at number 2, Craig Button has him at number 13, Future Considerations has him at number 5, and Dabra Prospects has him at 3. So the fact is, there are some rankings that go as high as number 2, number 3, and some rankings that go as low as number 10, 11, 12, with Button's number 13 being the lowest here available on the prospect list. Now, when it comes to how Berkeley Catton plays, this is all you need to look at. If you don't know anything about this guy, just think about this for a little bit. Berkeley Catton is an undersized 160-something pound forward who scored 116 points in 68 WHL games. He had 54 goals and 62 assists. Not to mention he was a double point-per-game player for Team Canada at the Linka Gretzky earlier last year, where he was the captain of Team Canada. In fact, if you go over to Cam Robinson, take a look at this right here. Berkeley Catton just wrapped up one of the top draft-eligible seasons in the WHL in the last 20 years and fellow draft-eligible player Tarek Paraskak was there as well. You can see on the list here, since 03-04, Berkeley Catton was only bested out in WHL draft production points by Nick Patan and Connor Bedard. Berkeley Catton literally outscored Ryan Nugent Hopkins, Leon Dreisaitl, Sam Reinhart, and everybody else who had played in the dub at this age range. Berkeley Catton did something that we haven't seen done in a very long time. And when you watch the tape, it's very easy to see why. I'm gonna put it very simply in the title of this video, Berkeley Catton is the human highlight reel. Just the overall talent this guy possesses at being able to handle the puck at top speeds, whilst quickly going left, right, up, down, and around players, while making some pretty good passes and reads in front, Berkeley Catton is one of the top playmakers in this year's draft, and you don't even need just my opinion to go out there and tell you that. Here's a comment made on the Sound of Hockey scouting report for Berkeley Catton. While size and physicality features in Catton don't strike many as appealing, his strong work ethic, offensive generation, and elite game-wrecking instincts may be too good to pass up. Whichever team has the opportunity of drafting him will be getting a developed hockey mind. You also had yourselves My NHL Draft, which has a compilation of the scouting reports here. Cal Cushman of The Score talks about how he pretty much could be a top five player. Luke Sweeney of Dauber Prospect says, What immediately jumps off the screen is Catton's puck control. He is an effortless, first touch, seamlessly blending puck receptions into movements without losing speed. And he can use his control to patiently protect the puck or to just dangle around his opponents at high speed. Sam Constantino in the 
infamous not a scouting report scouting report goes out there and talks about how Katten is a serious threat off the rush by either taking it to the net or creating lanes to find the next best scoring option Stephen Ellis says that Berkeley Catton was an unstoppable force at the Hlinker Gretzky Cup, leading Canada to gold with 8 goals and 10 points. He scored in every game, easily making him the tournament's top player. After a fantastic rookie season with Spokane, Catton, one of the best playmakers in the draft, is on pace to break the 100-point barrier this year. Scott Wheeler says that he is a heady playmaker who uses spacing to his advantage and sees the ice at an advanced level, regularly executing quick plays through coverage or delaying into a pre-planned play. He's got multi-dimensional skill, with an ability to play with both speed on the rush, he's a smooth skater, and more slowly down the inside of the offensive zone when the pace ramps down and he has to spin away from pressure. Corey Pronman writes that Catton is a fluid, dynamic skater with good foot speed and better edge work. He's very elusive with his feet and has high-end skill. Catton isn't that big, but he competes hard and is often buzzing around the ice due to his motor and skating. Long story short, if you're a Montreal Canadiens fan looking at this guy, you're seeing Nick Suzuki on your team, you're seeing Cole Caulfield, you talked about the other prospects, Sean Farrell, Raphael Harvey Pinard, who else is there? Like Pitlick, Xavier Simino, the Montreal Canadiens are not afraid to take small guys, especially small guys who are extraordinarily skilled with the puck, who can just create amazing offensive plays and dangle around guys. The Habs are not unfamiliar with this profile. So it goes to show that, hey, I mean, of course Canadians fans are going to be interested in Berkeley Catton. Why wouldn't they be? But a bunch of other fan bases also have much to look forward to as well, because when it comes to one of the guys with probably some of the best hands of the draft, I'm going to say, like it's definitely up there. Macklin Celebrini, I feel like maybe is the top dog, but Berkeley Catton's not too far behind. When it comes to how Catton reads the offensive zone, just the things that he does, when you see some of the highlights, when you watch some of the plays that he's able to create on the fly in split second decisions, it's a sight to behold because Catton has that ability to dangle the pants off of an opponent and then quickly make a lightning zip pass that nobody expects to his teammate who's on the opposite side for a cross crease one timer. Like he is so capable at just making the fancy play work and he doesn't sacrifice any of these extra parts of his game in order to do that. Far frequently, you'll see Catton just make a really nice dangle and then he'll send the pass across and it's like, oh, that was the right play. Like, there wasn't a better option there. Now, as always, I'm going to leave a link in the description to some of the resources we use in this video, including the Dauber Prospects Report, which is available here. It was a really good paragraph here written by Luke Sweeney, but the fantasy summary says that Catton stands out for his abundant dynamism, skill, and creativity, but his defensive engagement will need to take a few steps before he can make the jump to pro hockey. The November 2023 report goes over a lot of the skills that Catton has, again written by Luke Sweeney, talks about how he is an elite passer at the WHL level, completing highlight reel passes with regularity. In fact, most of the other elements of Catton's offensive game stand out as well. His snapshot? Hey, that's technically strong with a quick release that helps him beat goaltenders from short and middle-range distances. While not overly powerful, his strides are also quick and technically sound, which he partners with lateral crossovers to generate a ton of speed in the neutral zone. While he plays with enough pace and skill offensively to be worthy of a look in this year's top 10, the pace doesn't translate to other sides of the puck. Catton has shown an active stick and an understanding of passing lanes in a neutral zone, but he can often look lackadaisical in his own end, losing his checks and net battles. This is especially apparent on back checks, where he frequently shows little to no effort. While his speed, smarts, mobility, and active stick show potential for Catton's defensive game, his effort away from the puck is a big area of improvement for an otherwise uber-skilled forward. So, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below whether or not you think it's worth it for your team to consider Berkeley Catton at the top of this year's draft. Does he have the skill to be a top-tier guy? I'd say so. Does he have the point production to back it up? Yeah. Does he have the size and the frame? Probably not, but it doesn't diminish the talent that he does have. However, when it comes to the negatives, his defensive inability to engage in play, and his somewhat lackadaisical nature in his own zone, is that enough of a red flag for you to hold back on taking Catton somewhere in the top five? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below where you think Berkeley Catton will be drafted and how well do you think he's going to play at the NHL level. I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye.